Mira, chica, esta son chicas, porque jalan el pejero de Lucio. Oye, Lucio, la guarda la tema de pelado, eh, usted mi gato. As the net is released, it is being prepared to be brought up through the power block, which hauls an R end of the net. As you will see, we plunge through the entire set until the rings come up. Once the rings are up, the fish are completely trapped. Within minutes, it looks more like this. As you can see, all of the gillers coming down through the power block. This is because chums, particularly out of the fish species, have large nasty teeth whenever they become close to spawning, which in these hatchery situations is most of the time. Here we also just stacked most of the gillers down to the pile, and then once we were done with the set, we of course went back and cleaned out the net to make sure all the fish wouldn't rot. We are now getting to the most exciting point in the set, the bag. This is where you see if all your hard work paid off or not. We use a 5,000 pound hydraulic winch to split the bunt and pull the fish aboard, while the rest of the fish, as you can see, sift to the back of the bag, while a small portion of them are lifted onto the deck. This is called the rolling bunt. time that bunt comes aboard full of fish, we call it a split. Every split is worth about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds of fish. Last of the fish come aboard, we just prepare for the next set by taking the winches off from the net and putting the end of the net through the block. Then we reattach the purse line and the skiff's tow line, which he handed off at the beginning of the set. As you can see, a nosy fisherman passes by as he is looking at our catch. What you are witnessing is the Pacific Sea's first set in Anita Bay. The crew member said 10, letting the captain know that there's 10 fathoms of net left until he comes to the end of the tow line. comes the power skiff again, handing off his tow line first, and then the purse line, which will purse up the rings.
before half purse, we stack the net at a very slow pace to make sure that we don't purse the rings over the top of the fish. The corks are always stacked on the inside of the boat while the leads are stacked on the outside of the boat, and then they switch over at the half purse. Here we are hauling a little bit faster until we came to the half perch, and as you can see it's a clot of rings hanging from the purse line in the midship. We put a ring bar through the rings which allows us to keep the tension off the purse line so that I can feed back on top of the net to be ready to set again. You can now see me in the blue jacket there starting to hook up the rolling bun. There is a series of loops on the bottom part of the rolling bun which attaches from the aluminum framing on the long side of the deck and goes to the deck winch there where the purse line is feeding through. Here you can watch as Monka pulls in corks. Now we pull corks in in case we think that we have a big set to make sure that they don't sink with the weight of the fish. If the corks do happen to go under, we will most likely dump large amounts of fish. As you can see here, we have to pull in our corks. You can see they are getting very heavy and the fish are all built up against them, and we were actually very close to losing a large amount of our set. Monko likes to have lots of winches, and it comes in good handy here. As you can see, we are hooking one up to the rolling bun, and we are also hooking one up to the middle of the net, which will help keep it above the water line so that we make sure that there is 100% of the fish in the net staying in the net. And do I ever love the sound of fish hitting the deck. Usually we don't take the hats completely off, but in this case, it allows the fish to sink down to the tank faster.
were very happy with that being our first set of the season and thought that maybe it would bring us good luck and good fortune.